Abram and Lot separate. Before this story, we learned about how Abram was called by God to leave his country, and God would bless him, make his name great, and make him into a great nation. Yet, in Abram's heart was imperfections, fears, and faithlessness. Now we will learn about how Abram and Lot separate and go their own ways, and how God's faithfulness to Abram saves Lot from danger. Then, we see a promise made by God that would change the course of history, inspired by the book of Genesis. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. Yesterday, we looked at the story of Abram leaving his home and journeying to a new land, to Canaan. When he left, he brought with him his wife, Sarah, and also his nephew, Lot. Today, we're going to cover a lot of ground, starting with Lot and Abram and how their stories differ. You're about to see Lot's story. Though he was with Abram, he took a decidedly different direction. It's a sad story about decisions, being seduced by the apparent beauty of a place while neglecting to see the wickedness, the toxic wickedness that was brewing beneath the surface. We contrast that with the choices made while seeking God and depending upon Him. You'll also hear how Abram is coming into his own as a wise man who worships God and who cares more about honoring the Lord than receiving honor to himself. Finally, we'll see how Abram has learned, at least for now, to wait on God's timing and to plead with him, to plead with God for answers when the promise of descendants is still not fulfilled. It's a lesson for how you can approach God how you can approach God honestly, asking for the desires of your heart, even as you wait faithfully on his timing. Now, here is today's reading. Abram and Lot both increased in riches and influence, so much so that their livestock, servants, and warriors could no longer inhabit the same land. To keep their people from warring against one another, Abram proposed they separate. Separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right, then I will go to the left. Lot took Abram up on his generous offer and looked out at the Jordan Valley and saw that it was full of fertile plains in the direction of Zor. The plains were watered everywhere and reminded him of the old stories of the Garden of Eden. Lot chose the whole Jordan Valley and everything east of them. He then took his flocks and servants there, then parted with Abram and settled in the land of Sodom. Though the land was beautiful, Lot had wandered into a city filled with all kinds of evils. Men and women plagued with a wicked and debased culture lingered there, and Lot later on would find himself in great danger. Abram looked to the west towards Canaan. God, who had promised fruitful land to Abram, met him there and spoke. Lift up your eyes and see where you are, north, south, east, and west. Every piece of land you see I will give to you and your descendants forever. From you I will fill the earth with my righteousness. So Abram moved his tent and settled by the oaks of Mamre beside Hebron. And there he worshipped the Lord with a full heart. Towards the east, a great war spread like a plague across the region. The four kings of the cities in Sodom and Gomorrah rebelled against the confederation of five kings ruling over them. War, bloodshed, theft, and rape burned through Lot's land like a wildfire. A fierce and brutal battle traveled towards the valley of the Dead Sea. The four rebel kings clashed against their overlords, with thousands of men behind them. Running into battle, the armies of Sodom and Gomorrah were gripped by the tar pits below the valley, trapped and slaughtered slowly by their enemies. While some were mercilessly torn apart, others fled to the hills to die slowly in shame. In the aftermath stood Lot, helplessly robbed, beaten, then kidnapped by the Confederate kings. They had taken everything he owned, including all of the women and children under his care. Lot was now totally consumed by the wicked land he had chosen as a home, 
and a slave to the people he chose to dwell with. One of Lot's spies escaped the Confederate kings and ran towards the west where Abram lived in peace with his allies, Mamre, Eskol, and Anair. The word of Lot's captivity came to Abram, and there was no time wasted. Abram assembled 318 of his trained men and prepared them for battle. Together they traveled a great distance to retrieve Lot. Abram's land was at peace. This was not his war. Yet God was grooming him to be a hero. Abram did not storm the valley on horseback, nor did his army charge into battle with the horns of war behind them. They waited for the dark quiet of the night. Abram divided his army and had them swiftly take over the enemy. With quiet, tact, and swiftness, Abram took back Lot, his possessions, his people, and drove the rest of the enemy out to the north to be killed. Afterwards, Abram was met by a mysterious king and priest named Melchizedek. He brought Abram bread and wine, then blessed him, saying, Blessed be Abram from the Most High God, the Creator of heaven and earth. Blessed be the Most High God who delivered your enemies to you. Melchizedek spoke of Abram's God in a land that did not know him and was a priest of God before priests existed. Melchizedek's blessing mirrored that of God's, and Abram was astounded. Of all the possessions Abram had, he gave Melchizedek a tenth. This interaction between Abram and Melchizedek would be important for years and years to come. Shortly after, Abram was approached by the king of Sodom. The king desired to reward Abram for his victory and offered Abram the spoils of war. Yet Abram knew the wickedness lying beneath. He saw the king lying through his teeth. He knew that the king wanted Abram to be indebted to him. Abram, in a moment of honor, said, I have fought for the Lord, owner of heaven and earth. I will not take even a sandal strap from you, lest you think it is you who has made me rich. So Abram allowed his allies to take their share, but he took nothing and returned home. After rejecting the reward from the king of Sodom, the Lord then visited Abram in a vision. Again, he made a promise to Abram, saying, I am your shield, and I will provide you with a great reward. Abram, filled with sadness, looked to God, saying, O oh Lord, you say you want to bless me and my descendants, yet I remain childless. Shall I be forced to give all that I have to a servant of my household? Shall he inherit my land? God, with tender love and compassion, spoke gently to Abram. Look to the skies. See how the stars are countlessly scattered throughout the universe. Your descendants will be just as these stars, great in number and abounding in beauty. Abram, despite the doubt and anguish in his heart, believed God. It was this faith that God counted as righteousness. It was this faith that God would bless him with. Again, God spoke, saying, I am the one who brought you out of Ur and the land of the Chaldeans. I brought you out to give you this land to take possession of, because I am the Lord. Abram, still in faith, asked how he would take possession of the land already inhabited by so many people. God responded with a task. Bring me a female calf who is not given birth, a goat and a ram all three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. So Abram brought all of what the Lord asked for, cut them in half and arranged the halves opposite of each other. The birds he did not cut in half, though. Blood scattered all around Abram and his hands stained in red. Abram fell into a very deep sleep and a dreadful darkness came over him. God met him in his sleep, saying, Know for certain that your offspring will be sojourners and strangers in a land that is not theirs. There they will be servants, and they will be afflicted for four hundred years. But I am faithful, and I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve, and afterward they shall come out with great possessions. This he spoke of regarding the captivity of Egypt. As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. 
The night had continued, and Abram awoke to a burning flame between the pieces of flesh. And just as God had provided a covering for Adam and Eve in the garden with the furs of an animal, and protected Noah from the flood using the ark, so God provided a promise to Abram there. That day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, I give this land to your descendants, and God would not depart from Abram's side for the rest of his days, nor would he forsake his children. Today's reading opens with two men who are greatly prospering in the land God has brought them into. Abram is older and wiser, and he sees the potential for conflict even within a family over land and prosperity and property, and as he and Lot both grow in riches and in influence. So he gives Lot the first pick of which land to settle, and he agrees that he will take what Lot does not choose. Lot sees the beauty and the glory and the riches of the land near the Jordan River where the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were located. This is the land he chose. Perhaps he was blinded by the abundance and lushness of the area, but for whatever reason, he did not take into account the wickedness, the vile wickedness of the people in that area. Abram, on the other hand, went to God, and God showed him where he would settle. So we see the contrast of acting based on our own wisdom, as Lot did, versus seeking God's counsel and guidance in every aspect of life. The difference could not be more pronounced. Abram was blessed and continued to grow in riches and influence. But Lot? It wasn't long before Lot was in deep, deep trouble. Wars and rebellion threatened Lot's very life, and he was beaten, robbed, and kidnapped. Abram steps in as the hero and comes to the rescue of his nephew. We see Abram not as a nomadic traveler, but a warrior who comes in and conquers the enemy, driving them out of the land and restoring his nephew Lot. This wasn't Abram's war, but he intervened. As a result, Abram has an encounter with a high priest named Melchizedek who worship Abram's God. This priest blesses Abram and astounds him as his blessing reminds Abram of the blessing God has given him. There is another lesson we learn in this story, and that is with Abram's interaction with the king of Sodom, who tries to align himself with Abram. But Abram, rather than accepting the glory and the honor, trusts in the Lord. He turns back to the Lord. We can be tempted to accept praise from other men for our victories, but Abram reminds us that God is the source of our strength. He is our victory and the one for whom we live and strive. Finally, we see Abram pleading with God for his promises to be fulfilled. He is yet without descendants, and rather than taking matters into his own hands, he goes before God. I love the honesty of his interaction with God and the Lord's gentle and loving response. Here is what Genesis 15 verses 2 through 6 says. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, since I am childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? Abram also said, Since you have given me no son, one who has been born into my house and is my heir. Then behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This man will not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. And he took him outside and said, Now look toward the heavens and count the stars, if you are able to count them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. Then he believed in the Lord, and it was credited unto him as righteousness. God comforts Abram and adds to the promise. He will give him more than he could ever even fathom. How gracious of God to not only reaffirm the promises he'd made to Abram, but to point to the night sky as a reminder of that promise. You can just imagine how every time Abram grew discouraged or tired and felt that his faith was giving way, he looked up into a brilliant night sky lit up with the stars and remembered God's promise. In response, Abram offers a sacrifice and the Lord makes a covenant with him then and there. This is where we leave Abram for today. Once again, his story offers you a wonderful example of faith and submission to God and the timing the Lord brings. Oh, that we would trust in our Lord so fully 
as Abram. Dear Father in heaven, thank you that we can trust you and seek you for wisdom in every aspect of our lives. We are so grateful for Abram's story and how it teaches us to always live by faith and not sight and to trust in his promises always. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority in your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love. By sharing this podcast, you can make a difference in someone's life. And if you want more resources on how to tap into God's power for successful Christian living, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.